Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Rex. I'm Daniel. He's a level three whiskey sommelier, and I am a sexy, sexy dude. <laughs> yeah, just and only one dude. badass Rambo. This is. <laughs> if you stick around long enough, he's going to cut a bullet out of his side and seal it with gunpowder. Can I do that? Yeah. I was like, is that a thing? But I get to shoot you first. They shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Because you gotta have a bullet to cut out. You know what? I would kind of like to experiment with that. With cutting out a bullet? Well, sealing, seeing if you can seal something with gunpowder. Well, you can seal a uh, skin with gunpowder because you basically just burn the opening. Yeah, but wouldn't it just like? I know it burns, but it also kind of explodes a bit. No, how would, how would that no, no, burning it explode. actually explode? Cauterize the skin. No, gunpowder doesn't explode. It just catches on higher, fire fast with a hot flame. Okay. They don't, it's only explosive when Whenever trapped in a. Yeah. All right. And the explosion itself pushes. So I shouldn't cut out. my hand open. <laughs> I'd make a really <laughs> mercenary, is what we're learning. Yeah, you really have. To. <laughs> uh, this is from Kurt Miller, uh, one of our whiskey sommeliers. Kurt Miller. Wasn't it? Was one you got to ramp up. Kurt Miller, you magnificent. <laughs> Look what he did to you, Kurt. Look what he did. I labeled you. A name and everything. He's learning. Okay, so this is a rye that straight rye. That's every time rye. I say, I don't know if I really like rye, there's at least three people that are like, have you tried Dad's head? Okay. And I'm like, wait, 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 slow down on that. Mm -hmm. And then in a totally other situation, I'll be like, oh, I'm not really sure about rye. And then on Facebook, two people, have you tried Dad's head? Uh -huh. So it says <laughs> straight rye, remind me. There's the straight bourbon that has some qualifications. What is straight? Same thing. Okay. What it's is exactly the same thing. That means it, it's at least two years old. Okay. Um, and here they're uh, bottled on 2013, um, barreled on 2013, bottled on 4 2017 So this is four years old, which means they don't need an age statement. Okay. This is vibrant, man. This is light. Um, actually, it's, it's not really four spicy. Years old. Ooh. The rice spice uh, unfolds into apple on the end. Yeah, that. Uh, now this is cool, man. This is um, there's things going on. There's a cool stories with this rye. This is in Pennsylvania, and if you remember the early days of whiskey, there were really only two dominant locations for production and styles. There was the bourbon coming out of Kentucky, and there was rye whiskey coming out of the Pennsylvania region, and it was named Monongahela rye. Yeah. yeah. Direct sunlight. It's just. I'm not. I shouldn't be in the sun. You should not be a mercenary, that's for sure. Worst Rambo ever. <laughs> <laughs> a delicate, lilting flower of the field. It's just, it's just slightly warm here. It's yeah. uh, Anyway, Monongahela was a style of rye. Basically, it just became synonymous with rye whiskey at a certain point. Yeah. And then because of Prohibition, it just destroyed the industry of Monongahela, Monongahela rye. Now, these guys are on the opposite side of the state from Monongahela River. Mm -hmm. But they're making a classic Monongahela style rye, which means it's almost entirely rye whiskey. Okay. No corn. It's rye, malted barley, and some malted rye. This, right? This, so this is as dominant rye as you're going to get without 100%. I do enjoy how this slowly unfolds into a different kind of creature. Some, some whiskeys, there's just like one note throughout the whole thing, and then it's done. It falls off the cliff. Others... It's switching it up moment to moment. This is a slow evolution. The first sip is uh, it's big rice spice. Just really yeah, and big. cinnamon and all yeah. those dominant And then cloves. the longer that sits, the finish turns into more of a, just a sweet apple. Still a little bit of the cinnamon left over. Wow, that's burned to that. That's good. Yeah. Now this is... I was, that's 62% alcohol. Okay, I was about to ask you. I'm going to go get some water. Yeah. Try a little water in this. It just explodes with green apple. Okay. Smell that. I was going to ask... Before you water yours down. I was going to ask you uh, if you found this hot too because I burned my tongue over the weekend. Yeah. I'm thinking I'm going to be a little bit more sensitive to any whiskey yeah. alcohol, but you... Yeah, it's 62. Yeah. But see that green apple note? It's really explosive all of a sudden. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. This, you know, I get why people it's, are like, do you like Dad's Head? You ever tried Dad's Head? It's, it's probably <laughs> one of the more complicated rides I've ever had. Yeah, I agree with that. It's very complex. It has stuff going on. It's really sparkly. I'm also getting this weird kind of vegetation note in the middle. On yours or mine? Yeah, on mine. That's... Well, green apple's a vegetation. No, that's well, not what I'm thinking. I'm thinking like when you smell fresh cut grass. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. I get it. 
I get it. Ray Durr. Wish this channel was less hipster and lispy. So every once in a while, <laughs> I come across an insulting comment that makes me laugh out loud. <laughs> and I just decide to include it because it made me laugh out loud. <laughs> so Rex. Uh, we have so much lispiness going on. Yeah, super lispy. You know, I have a frustration I was expressing uh, over the on. weekend. I, you have a frustration, yeah. I have a question. Okay. Because. Am I an accidental hipster? Wow, like that's part of my frustration. Yeah, okay. So here's the thing. Because this is not for trying. No. But have I, be have I become hip because I so don't try. I wear like the, the Walmart, the Costco, so, just anything that's given to me. Here's the problem. <laughs> here's the problem. Hipster has lost all meaning I today. I think so too. Because and so it used to be... So no, okay, so... Another word, in my opinion, another word for hipster should be a try-hard, right? Someone who is trying so hard that they're to be unaffected, Okay. right? That their entire being is an affectation, right? right? And so you wear clothes that aren't cool simply because you know they aren't cool. You're doing yeah. it on purpose, right? right. <laughs> or the opposite, you intentionally overcare about being perfectly put together. And, but to my point, right? it's just lack of... Yes, so we represent... So do we land in the same place with tryhards? Yes. Because... We, no, no, not caring is different than tryhards. Right, but do we land in the same place as tryhards in terms of like... I don't feel like this is what hipsters We are. land on opposite sides of the spectrum. Okay. So the thing is that I am frustrated. But is the, the spectrum a circle? I am in my next to No! <laughs> I am. It's a funnel. We're just rolling around this outside. I just. So. Uh, I can't hear you past all the lisp. Dude. I know. I am frustrated that it's now no longer okay for a male to care about what he wears without being labeled hipster. To take some concern yeah. for whether he looks nice. Yeah, so, and as soon as you do that, so that if extent, you also have a beard, right. they're like, and hipster douchebags. I think the term hipster has been adopted by people who have no idea of kind of like the the originations of it. It's like right. the downtown, downtown subculture with the fixie bike and the, the old man glasses right. and the mustache that's totally ironic but not really ironic. And, it's like this kind of stuff. It's an affectation. It, this is hipster, but then whenever your aunt or your your mom starts throwing around hipsters, like you have no idea what hipster is. Now, and these, then everybody uh, in the world starts saying hipsters. Like you don't. You're just saying things. Hipster is an insult now that is synonymous with douchebag, and they use hipster in place of douchebag when they don't actually mean hipster. So we're douchebags. So I wish this channel was less <laughs> douchey and lispy. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> Raider. This is a Rex Day comment section. Ray Dirt. Is it? Yeah. Rock, or Rock the Builder says, I apologize if this is a super lame question, but why is Rex for, referred to as the Mooch? So I realized it's been a while. Yeah, no, it's been a while. He tried to Google the answer, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Google, why is Rex a Mooch? Google, who's Rex? <laughs> <laughs> what, the hell is, what the hell is a Rex? Uh, so it's been a while since people understood why I got called the Psalm and you got called the Mooch. Right. Now, I got called the Somme because I'm a whiskey sommelier. Mm -hmm. He got called the Mooch because he showed up one day to drink free whiskey and, I never, and never left. left. <laughs> That's but, basically it. But then my whiskey spirit eagle, the one that, you know, granted me my powers. Yeah, how how ungrateful were you? He just you he, just he punched just, him. Just, just just there's an incident. There was an incident. An incident. <laughs> Monty Hibden, don't get me wrong, I love you, Daniel, but Re but Rex. Rex is just great. <laughs> These Rex. are the comments we need. <laughs> this is that for you. You want to get on the comments? You want to get yeah. on the, read on the show? That's what you want to do. <laughs> uh, so I would say um, I had a good weekend too. Yeah. You know, no, I did last night. But that was, was kind of fun. Was it artisanal? Uh, actually, it might have been, but a very different kind. Yeah. Just like our opposite ends of the spectrum of hipster. Your hipster is give zero f right. and my hipster is, no, I want to try a little bit. Just give all the f Yeah. So my sat Sunday afternoon was, you know what, we want to go out to eat before the boys are done, go back to school, right? Mm -hmm. Last Sunday before school starts again, and my wife's a teacher, so she's back in. Um, I but you don't want to go on a Sunday at lunch because you're going to wait for an hour wherever you go. I like it a little bit better with just a, a touch of water. Yeah, me too. Me too. Have a little water. Yeah. Um, 
You don't want to go on lunch on Sunday, and you don't want to go on dinner on Sunday. Both of those are just your guarantee to wait. Mm -hmm. So we thought, well, let's go at like 2.30, and then we'll do a long lunch, and it'll make for lunch and dinner. And then I realized, wait a minute, you know what we could do to make it really last? Is we could do a progressive meal. So we did a different course yeah. at four different restaurants. Okay. So we went one place for appetizers. Sounds horrible. It was great. No. No. We went one place for appetizers oh. and we sat at the bar every time with the boys. <laughs> so you don't have to wait. I explained this to you. You know, this, this yeah. whiskey does deserve us to be talking about it more. No, I talked about it a ton. Okay, fine. I explained this to you last week because I've achieved this, this situation. I'm not sure how long it can last, but consistently people know, so I'm a tremendous amount of time, uh, yes, we can totally go get lunch, but I'm there to eat, hang out while we're eating, and as soon as I'm done eating, I'm standing up and I'm walking out of the restaurant. You're missing out on the journey, my oh, friend. Oh, oh, oh. No, I, I agree with Daniel. you on a weekday lunch. I was telling, yeah. This is like I agree with five you. lunches out of the seven in a week. Yes, yes, and I totally agree with that. No. This is not that. No, you're talking about a weekend thing? Yes. Just sit on your ass at home. No. People bring you food, Daniel. No. This is a glorious no. time. Not in my home. <laughs> Look, there's services. They will bring No, no, that's true. Food. I use that like four nights a week. Yeah. No, no. So we did appetizers at North by Northwest, and then we needed salad and soup selection. So we went to a kick-ass restaurant called Vinaigrette on South Congress, yeah. and we ran into Jeremy and Chris. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we hung out there for a couple of drinks. And then we went to Poke Poke, mm -hmm. a poke restaurant. If you haven't had poke, it's awesome. It'd be funny if they serve not poke. Not poke, yeah. And then we went to dessert, and we went to ice cream. Okay. And it was a nice little journey. Sure. You've never done a progressive meal? Sounds where you just kind of cruise around town and all you do is eat? Dude, I just, just give me, like, we're going to hang out. We're, yeah. we're gonna, we, can, we can talk about you stuff. You are so lazy. It's going to be great. <laughs> but as soon as... <laughs> You are so lazy, you won't even put effort into good things. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just have so many... We'll end on a high note. I just have so many good things in my life, I have to discriminate yeah. <laughs> between which good things I'm going to be spending my time and energy on. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> right, here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. If you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.